what would you want people to know about Bosnia and Herzegovina? Main thing that bothers me when somebody is speaking about Bosnia, uh, they speak like the war is still happening or there is still conflict here. There is a, rarely a place where you can find all of the, the, the buildings of all of the three main religions. My name is Selma, I'm 24 years old and I'm a Bosniak. I finished my BA in Political Science and Sociology and I'm currently on my Master's Studies in International Relations. My name is Danilo, I'm 25 years old. I'm about to finish my Master's uh, degree in Psychology. I'm a Serb from Bosnia and Herzegovina. Welcome to Bosnia and Herzegovina. This is Sarajevo, its capital, the Jerusalem of the Balkans. The country is home to three main ethnic groups. Bosniaks, who are mostly Muslim, Serbs, who are Christian Orthodox, and Croats, who are mainly Catholic. Today, the country is divided into two entities. The Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, mainly Croat and Bosniak populated, and the Republika Srpska, where over 80% of the population is of sub-ethnicity. Its capital is Banja Luka. When somebody asks me about my identity, immediately uh, I say it's Orthodox Serb. On Balkans, uh, uh, these two identities, uh, religious and national, they are like binded together. So uh, you can't say uh, uh, anything different from uh, Orthodox Serbs, Catholic, uh, Croat and uh, Muslim Bosniaks. For me, my religion plays a role, but you, it is important to make this division and to not define these ethnic groups only based on their religious belonging. I describe myself like a Serb. I'm not Bosnian Serb. I am here in this country. I have citizenship of this country, but I'm definitely Serb. And um, when they say you are Bosnian Serb, like they are just trying to separate us from our motherland and um, uh, trying to divide us. Bosnia's ethnic divisions are key to understanding the war that tore the country apart between 1992 and 1995. The civil war between Croats, Serbs and Bosniaks is the worst conflict on European soil since World War II. Since I was a child I knew there was a war, although my family never wanted to talk about this period much. The first time I uh, hear some stories were uh, on our family meetings when our elders meet up. From the per perspective of my father and grandfather who fought in the war, um, they don't talk like uh, many men their age, and, uh, nor about their emotions about that war. Especially my father, he lost uh, his uh, best years of life. When the war started, my family, uh, my whole family was in Banja Luka. They didn't experience armed conflict, but they experienced a lot of other things that still are very, you know, that are trauma, that, are, that were very stressful to them. There was a, this systematic discrimination that started against Bosniaks. It was dangerous to go out. There was a slight chance that they could be taken to concentration camps or tortured. My mom has like, um, there is six of them in the family, so one brother and five sisters, and all of them uh, had to leave uh, during the war. All of them now have families abroad, uh, which is, I think, something that they will never recover from. I remember the first moment when it was like uh, something shifted in me. It was actually when I came to study here in Sarajevo. I, for the first time, came where, uh, to the city where my ethnicity is a majority, where I could meet more, more people that are of my ethnicity. Our elders, uh, they saw other uh, ethnicities uh, from the perspective of war. I was born after it, so I don't have these burdens. There's a sense of grief because they lost everything in that war and when we speak about war that's the main thing everybody lost in that war nobody gained nothing and uh, we all uh, needed to start again it's 1991 and the soviet union is disintegrating over in the balkan region yugoslavia a federation of six republics under communist rule is also falling apart by the end of 1991 croatia slovenia and macedonia had all declared independence engaging in various degrees of fighting to achieve it. Bosnia, however, was still in the Federation and Serbia wasn't going to allow Yugoslavia to fully dissolve, aiming to become its successor state. 
This is where the history books stop in Bosnia and Herzegovina schools. For us, history, it doesn't stop, but in the books, it stops in the 80s. When I spoke to uh, Croats and Bosniaks, then I sensed uh, that um, we only learned about our side of history from our perspective. Uh, we never made that common ground. In the country, there is not uh, the educational system is not unified, so curriculum differs between entities. Uh, there is one curriculum that is uh, in Republika Srpska and the other one that is in Federation. The civil war in Bosnia uh, isn't mentioned in our history classes, so everything we learn are from uh, movies, from internet, for our leaders, from historians. So uh, we are left without that uh, true knowledge. As Yugoslavia was dissolving, none of the three ethnic groups that made up the Socialist Republic of Bosnia and Herzegovina wanted to live in a country controlled by the other side. In 1992, the UN recognized Bosnia's independence, and that didn't sit well with the Serbs. So the Bosnian war began. In April 1992, Yugoslav and Serb forces attacked Sarajevo, starting a siege that would last for almost four years, the longest in the history of modern warfare. In 1992, the whole city hall was set on fire and more than two million books and archives and documents vanished in the flames. So the whole building was completely like ruined and they rebuilt it. Um, it's, a, it's an important part because it, is, uh, uh, it shows how the war was more than, you know, just a mere conflict of misunderstanding. It was about, you know, ruining like all elements of one identity of one culture because you know what else can prove your existence and what your identity than you know history language literature fighting went on for three and a half years with atrocities committed by all sides the alliance of bosniaks and croats against serb forces fell apart at times causing wars within the war Aside from imposing sanctions, the international community hesitated to intervene. The UN mostly stuck to its peacekeeping principles and in 1993 established safe zones for civilians across the country. On July 11, 1995, Bosnian Serb troops marched into Srebrenica where thousands of Bosniaks had sought refuge, unarmed, under UN protection. Dutch peacekeepers were unable to prevent Bosnian Serb forces from rounding up 8,000 Bosniak men and boys and systematically executing them in the deadliest massacre on European soil since World War II. The International Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia defined what happened in Srebrenica as systematic ethnic cleansing, a genocide. We have this belief in the international court because they only prosecuted our people uh, but uh, the, the real thing is that uh, if we say that is genocide and it say that we did it, they not only want to do that, they just want to put label over our whole nation and uh, the claim that we are aggressors, that we, are, uh, that we wanted to uh, cleanse the whole Republic of, Ser of Serbska of them. And uh, that's the not complete story. That's the main problem. I don't want to glorify uh, war crimes that are committed. Uh, I just want to say that the perspective is much larger. There is a substantial difference on how different ethnicities see the war. And uh, I'm not sure whether there can be any kind of, you know, uh, middle ground on which they can agree because like, um, you know, uh, Bosniaks suffered a lot. When someone tries to deny something you experience, then I think it hurts even more. And that's why it's a really, you know, sensitive and difficult situation. To this day, most Bosnian Serbs deny the genocide. Around 100,000 people died during the war, and it's estimated that 70 to 80 percent of them were Bosniak Muslims. Around 2 million people were displaced. The war ended in 1995 with the Dayton Peace Agreement, brokered by the US with help from European countries and Russia. Croats, Serbs and Bosniaks agreed to peace into a single sovereign state known as Bosnia and Herzegovina. We were Yugoslavs. And after war, we faced the harsh reality because the Croats, uh, before war and after war, they still had their identity. Uh, Bosniaks have their, but we are left with nothing. In Serbia and here, like, we are one nation and that is something that uh, we worship and uh, want to be um, known for. 
like we are one nation, uh, one religion. Why is that problem? Ethnic nationalism has risen in sub-majority areas, both among the population and its institutions, fueled and promoted by those in power. Bosnia's political system is rooted in the Dayton Agreement. The two entities of the Federation of Bosnia and the Republika Srpska are self-governing. Above them, on a state level, Bosnia has a tripartite presidency, meaning there's one president per ethnicity. There's also a prime minister and a parliament. Above all of that is the high representative, who cannot be Bosnian and is an international official, so far, always from the EU. This means that the EU and US are, to this day, guarantors of the country's peace. This country has been in a crisis and has been unstable for like 30 years. We do not know anything else ex except crisis, instability, uh, scandals. When you, as a young generation, are every day bombarded with these, you know, negative news, uh, you're constantly being, uh, you know, uh, scared whether something else will happen, whether the war will start again. History uh, itself isn't a problem, but it's a problem when politicians uh, use that to divide us and to put us in the state, flight or fight, like uh, the war is uh, near or it's uh, coming. This war story is constantly being used as a tool. When you are in a state of fear, um, you react differently. You don't want to live like this, and if, if you feel that you cannot do anything about it, you will just leave. In December of 2022, the European Council granted EU candidate status to Bosnia and Herzegovina. I don't think we are ready, not because um, our people, but because our governments. They definitely need to, to be more uh, transparent, uh, more oriented towards people. I personally don't see us still ready to join EU. I feel European because we are in Europe, Balkans is part of the Europe, uh, but uh, I'm having doubts whether the rest of Europe consider us European enough. I personally get the feeling that sometimes we are, you know, considered, considered as this third class of the Europe. I, I hope that I will, uh, in my lifetime, uh, be proud a member of the uh, European Union. I'm going to try everything I can to build a life here that is decent, that is worth of a human being, that you can earn enough, live a normal life, build a family. And only when I try everything and I don't succeed, then I will leave. I don't want uh, like my parents to uh, uh, go somewhere else and start all, all over again. I just want to stand on their shoulders and their, um, their things that they do so that I don't need to start all, all, all over again. We are the first generation, almost the first generation after the war, and uh, of course it um, affects you more. In future, I uh, hope that our country will be less divided, that we are uh, more tolerant uh, to each other, and that we are um, building together future. We should love this country more and, and try our best to, to make the best version of it.